Welcome back to the Southern Two Lane Podcast. I'm DJ Seeley. Randall B. Jeremy Johnson. Buck Owens. Buck Owens in the house. Down to the streets of no Baker. I'm going to do that every time. I'm going to say it, the streets of Baker. Know where the, the the buck came from? Uh, so uh, sixth grade, okay, uh, middle school football. Um, I had a, uh, a a football coach. Uh, he wasn't my head coach. He was you know like wide receivers coach. And uh, he uh, he came up to me one day. He's hollering at you know hollering at players, running run his prance and all that stuff. And he's like, Owens, get over here, Owens. That's like that like Buck Owens. You watch he haul son. I'm like yes, sir. <laughs> Drop, give me some twinage. You know, that kind of thing. So, Buck stuck. There are people. Oh, well, what? Buck stuck. And uh, there there are people who have known me, literally, my whole life, and don't know my real name is Chris. To them, I'm Buck. Oh, wow. And, and, I, and I'll, I always have been, always will be. So, yeah. Um, and uh, it, it, it stuck We're going to have to get you a hat. It's got Bakersfield across. Yeah. Um, Sixth grade. You went Coleman, right? Yeah. Uh, you had uh, Danny Miller. Yeah, roll call, call boys. Roll call boys. You ever get paddled by that guy? Yeah, oh, yeah. I was used to run and jump and hang on the rim. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I was a fast uh, grower in seventh grade. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, paddled a number of those. What hurts? So yeah, and, and they, they need to do something that today. And and it it stuck through college. You know, buck stuck. And um, say it again. Buck stuck. And That's what he needs, Buck Stuck. But uh, but my wife refuses to call me Buck. Um, <laughs> like Butt Stuck. <laughs> it does kind of sound like that. Uh, I was thinking it. I was just. Oh right my oh, that's goodness good gracious! So maybe, maybe I need a new nickname now. But um, but yeah, Buck. It's easy to remember too. Butt know? Owens. Yeah, you. Uh, so so like when you and I had the uh, the uh, awesome privilege of meeting uh, uh, Mr. RP Fighter. Oh yeah. Yeah. R- 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 yeah. And, yeah. In. Um, in, in Sturgis, uh, Mr. Robert Patrick, um, I introduced myself to him as Buck, and he says to me, Buck Owens? Man, I love your music. I thought, man, see, so it's more likely that It's Robert, a conversation piece. Yeah, yeah. Robert Patrick, he, he might remember that he met Buck Owens. Yeah, he might do it. I'm going to get, I'm gonna have to get me a nickname. Yeah, I got one for you. That's why I call my, I'm, I'm ready to be. It's DJ. I, I got well. JJ, Let's call you JJ. JJ's been a thing for most of my life. Oh, yeah, okay. but that, that's not that's not clever enough, and we can't yeah. poke fun at you. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. true. That's true. So J- uh, JJ. So I've got a topic that we can touch on before we move on to a bunch of other things. Let's talk. Let's talk. Uh, listen to uh, before he even says anything. For, there is a possibility if he says what I think he's about to say that I'm gonna go have a snack. I'll be back. <laughs> no, no, no. That's not what you think it is. <laughs> let's talk. Um, let's talk. Helmet communications. <laughs> so, well, I know I say had enough to drink. I, no, no, no. I, I get where you're going with this, but so a few years ago, whenever I, I already had my road glide at the time, and of course you went and you got that street glide and everything, you were a big fan of wanting to get the helmet. Communicate. Mesh talk, yeah. Mesh talk. Oh, and, yeah, early on. He wanted to be and, chatty, Kathy. And Let's I, all link up. Let's all talk. And what I used to say, <laughs> what I told him, I said, no, I don't want to do that. You know, because whenever I'm on the bike, especially like, I love you guys. I mean, I, I do. But whenever I'm on the bike, at that time, I want it to be about me and the bike, even if I'm riding in a group. Um, I want to ride my ride. Yep. And now, granted, we've had lots of good very funny <laughs> conversations <laughs> while riding you know uh, through the helmet through the comms but for the most part I am totally anti-communicators 
in the bikes. I've got one. I've got the Cena 30K. I don't like. I feel like I've heard this story. I bought one Ladies because and gentlemen, of the brand. This segment will be brought to you by Manscaped. <laughs> 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 now, speak so yeah. back to your originally scheduled back program. Stage, there you go. I, I was against him. I got one because Randy wanted. Uh, he wanted to do the whole headset thing, and I was totally against it. I was like, no. You know, we can we can point and we can do this and use sign. You know, we can use signs, well, part, whatever. Yeah, but part of the reason was because when I first got back into riding, I was thinking I was going to be this really safe rider. I was going to wear guarded leather with all the guards, full face helmet. I was going to do all this stuff, and I wanted comms to be able to say, "Jeremy, on your right, you got somebody coming over on you." You know, I'd be talking like that. Then all of a sudden, I found out that I'm helmetless, short sleeve, and Chuck T's on a bike, and I really don't care anymore. So. Well, <laughs> I, you know, I, I can see where they serve their purpose. Um, you know, and they are good. Uh, you know, me and my buddy Philip Roberts, whenever we went and rode Blue Ridge Parkway last September, we rode Blue Ridge Parkway and all of uh, Shenandoah Skyline and all that. We had them, um, used them the whole time. They were on, but they it wasn't like we were having a continual conversation the whole the whole time. Uh, there were a couple of instances where we ran at a curve. There was, you know, a log in the road or, you know, a deer run out. Hey, there's a deer up here, whatever. That they came in handy, but for the most part, um, I'm totally against them. My, my logic on that is, hey, let's just point, use hand signals and all that. And then whenever we stop for fuel or whenever we stop and get, you know, grab a beer at the end of the day or whatever, hey, let's, let's talk about what we saw along the way that day. So that's my take. Y'all chime in. Well, um, the, uh, the 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 wife and I, our, our previous bike, um, we we had um, comms in our helmets, and uh, we we'd like that to be able to to talk as we're going down the road. Yeah, uh, you see that? Um, wow, well, there's there's two cows humping. You know that that kind of thing. <laughs> well, you might you might point at like a real pretty tree, and she sees a, an old Volkswagen. Right, right. So yeah, uh, um, and uh, so um, I actually story for another time i went uh down on my old bike busted my helmet up and, and actually fell on the side where the, the comms was <clears throat> so when we uh bought the road king um the, the wife was i was like I, I want i want the sons of anarchy look you know yeah. and and uh, the wife was like but we can't talk you know and, and so part of part of that for her is sharing in the experience i think communicating when we can and being able to listen to music too because the road king doesn't have the speakers and the fairings and all that so you know sometimes when i'm i'm out by myself just in town you made a mistake when you bought it <laughs> absolutely not absolutely just not. teasing man i love just my teasing. bike um uh so you know in now sometimes when, when i'm in the music mood uh, i'll still put on my full face and and pair to my phone and listen to tunes but I have since, um, and Shelly uh, and Allison played a, a big role in this, uh, kind of turned Lisa on to the, the open face helmet. She didn't think she'd like all the wind in her face, so up in Sturgis, you know, they were running a deal at uh, Microdot, so I, I picked up two um, beanie helmets, two half shells. Um, she's going to give that a go. Um, because I have, and, and you, you and Shelly do this, you know, it's perfectly okay for the wife to lean forward and oh, yell in your ear mm, over the muffler, yeah. you know, there's two cows humping over yeah, there. Right. Yeah, yes. so. yeah. I mean, for the most part, you know, and I know we, they, they were, they were riding up year or so before we started riding together, but, um, you know, yeah, the comms were kind of part of what we wanted to do, I thought. Yeah. Uh, but that goes back to the end of our last episode where we kind of got into the, the solemnness and the uh, you know serenity of riding and, and everything and, and like even Shelly now she don't even she don't even want to put on her full face you know I, I mean if, and if it's too cold to wear the half she's probably not riding anyway yeah. so I don't know when the last time was that she's had on her uh, pumpkin helmet here I just put that on the other day but <laughs> I don't know when the last time she's even had it on yeah. uh, I'll wear mine I've started wearing it again since I ride the PA because I guess you know while you're wearing a venture bike you gotta have full face helmet we have that concept yeah. um, but I will wear it if I'm riding during the day, like if it's work, like if I'm even if I'm going. Oh, yeah. Forward, because I can. I have taken Phone. conference yeah. calls in my Phone. helmet before. Yeah. Uh, they are a long way from what they were 20 years ago. Uh, and I had Cena, 
uh, you know, Harley and Sano were partners, and uh, that was one of the better ones. Well, Cardo's always been out there, but uh, they haven't until recent kind of really caught up and probably surpassed in quality. Um, and I'm not, are they from the States? I think they're from Europe somewhere, aren't they? Well, this year... I'm thinking Canada, maybe? Uh, I know. that I didn't think they were out of this. But anyway, th this year they actually, you know, tied the knot with Harley and Cena's out and Cardo's in. Um, and, uh, and, that, and I bought one and put it on. So, you know, Shelly's still got the, the comp port for the Cena. So we and we can mesh up with the two. It's just it's just not as simple as it used to be. But, yeah, I don't... Uh, that And, and the, the adventure bike don't have speakers on it. Right. So if I'm on it and want to hear music, I'll listen, you know, that way. But... Um, and yeah, then, I'm, I'm not. I'm not a big uh, a big doer of the comms for the most part. Um, I guess they have their place in certain situations, circumstances. Yeah. But uh, when I took the 1,800 mile trip out there, you know, I, I was, you know, I still worked. So I talked to my guys during the day. I talked to customers, and and amazingly enough, you know, I could, they could hear me, and everything was good. Yeah, and they now, can't tell you doing 80. Yeah, they have no idea. They, they can't you know, hear the exhaust. It's not the like being on the phone with it to right. your ear or in your truck, right. but it's still not like yeah. wind blowing in the mic and all that yeah. stuff. Well, with my full face helmet, I position the, the Cena and the components to where the microphone is literally directly in front of my mouth. So I, you know, I could talk in almost a voice that I would use in a library, yeah. even going down the road uh, at speed uh, and have and take a phone call. Yeah. Um, and I've done it uh, a few times. Um, but for the most part, I'm I'm out on it. Um, so your your Cardo, and this is something that that you researched and, and I've looked into as well. Yeah. Um, which I, I I don't have the Cardo. I've I've, uh, I've got the old school Harley's old bed partner. But um, you uh, and you played around with this a little bit ago, and you put out a video where you were able to pair it to your Insta 360 camera. Yes. yes. And actually talk. And, Correct. and lay down some audio as you're riding down the road. Moto vlogging. Yeah, that, and that's a pretty cool feature yeah. to me. Yeah, that was one reason that I bought the um, uh, the um, X4 Insta360 camera. Yeah. Um, the X3 was still good, but the 4 has the ability to pair yeah. uh, your mic to it. So um, it paired up, and as soon as you hit record, if your um, headpiece is on, you're connected. Yeah, uh, and so yeah, that was that was pretty cool. And I've do done that. all kinds of research to try to figure out how to get the Cena to connect. And, and they're they're obviously it's a Cardo uh, yeah. X4 thing yeah. or, or yeah. Insta. I don't know what it is, but there's a frequency that the two of them have and see between each other yeah. that none nobody else does. Yeah, yeah. And there there's a lot of angry uh, Cena people. Yeah, oh, well, I'm sure um, who who want that uh, yeah. as you know an, an yeah. update or a. a I don't use I don't yeah, use I mine at all. I feel like I mean it, it, it's it's great um, for me. It's kind of um, for the amount that I have ever used it versus what I paid for it. I, I feel like for me it was a pretty big waste of money. Well, that was one of the things that I was going to mention. They're they're really cost prohibitive. I mean, unless you're planning on wearing one. We first started riding, him and Allison would be on like. And you may can use the terms because I don't remember, but they would be on talking to each other. But then John and myself, and we would be kind of on mesh. And then he would come in every now and then and switch over and talk to all of us. And then he would switch back and just talk to Allison. Yeah. Because I think Allison's wouldn't mesh, or something. I don't. Um, I don't remember. There was something because uh, hers, hers was Bluetooth. Hers was not mesh compatible. And, and listen, y'all. I. I've wasted so much money going down this this rabbit hole of comm units and uh, Harley Davidson's connectivity and I, I mean, Apple CarPlay and all super this stuff. frustrating. Been on the phone with tech support with Cena. Been on the phone with customer support with Harley. As high up the ladder as I can take it, like this does not work the way it's designed to work. Mm -hmm. um, so that that was super frustrating for me. Um, because Allison and I, when we first started riding together, we used the wired headsets. No. And if you want a good experience, like go wired. Yeah. It works flawlessly. You speak, it turns on, 
you're communicating, you stop speaking, the music comes back on. Right. It, it's well, it's tied to the to the bike's brain, and it and it works. Whereas the Cena and the Carter and all that stuff, yeah, so, is so it works trying like to work if around. You're getting uh, GPS instructions that kind of overrides that, and then yeah, you it can comes turn back it on. on and off, and, and tell yeah. it you want this to do this and that to yeah. do that. Yeah. And she can hear this, and I can hear that. But like that's you where you have the, the control of the world, and it works fine as long yeah. as you're plugged into that bike. I, I I think well, you know, like even the best, and I would consider the Cena the the 30k that's still on my helmet that I've got now. It's a good unit, like it's it's good. However, you know, I've got like the during the release the the, the model that I got, um, I got like the 30 30k first gen. Well, then I bought the one for Kim's helmet, not even four months later. Well, in those four or five months, they changed the speaker out that's in your ears. Mm -hmm. And hers has actually got the better speakers, and I've wore it, and it is better. However, even at max volume, like we as, you know, Harley riders, the what's the first upgrade you do to your bike? You make it louder. So it's kind of one of those things where you, you're able to hear it, Whenever I, I ride the Harley, but it's still not like it's super clear. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's just kind of a well. And that's the difference kind of, of the way. of the plug-in, and I never got to experience it. But I know the uh, when I bought Wayne's uh, Street Guy, it had the plug-ins, and I don't know what year. I want to say it was around eighteen when they quit making the plug-ins. Well, like, I think like, it was model like, specific too. If if, if you got a like electric these bikes don't have them on there. My, my truck lines a twenty, and it's it's got. And John's has John's has got them. My, I think my nineteen CVO Limited has got plugs for it. I'm See, my really twenty-one sure is not yours. Okay. Yeah, it is not. So sometime between nineteen and twenty-one, I guess. Yeah. Now the Road Glide does not have them either, and I don't think your Road Glide does. No, my Road Glide. Does um, but I have heard stories um, from folks, couples, that traveled. Matter of fact, um, Anna and Tony. Rob is at road with us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They have them, and they plug them in, and they operate. And the bike, it's all a seamless operation. I mean, it just She's got control straight. of her stuff. He's got control of his stuff. The whole nine yards. You set it up to say passenger has control of her volume, and then blah 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 blah. The only uh, uh, so, you know, our early on when I was first you know purchasing gear, I decided to go with the Shoei Neotech because I wanted the comm system to be built into the helmet. Right. And and Cena offered that for the showy, so that that was the route I went. I bought both those Neotechs. I bought both those SRL units to go in it, and then come to find out that doesn't talk play well with the bike. So then we ended up taking those out by 30Ks and put 30Ks in them because those seemed to work better with the bike, and it, and it was just constant frustration. You had to, in order to get Apple CarPlay to work. You know, you got to power the headset on, and then power the bike on, and then plug the phone in. And if you did anything out of order, it wouldn't work. Yep. And then you had to cut it all off. And then you had to start all start over. over and it was just constant frustration with that. To the point I just got fed up with it. But um, anyway, that that was that was the first year of riding. That that was just a pain. Mm -hmm. Now we wanted to go wireless. You know, we were happy with the wired, but she thought, okay, if we go wireless, then I can connect my phone to my headset, and you can connect your phone to your headset, and listen to two different. Yeah, if you want to listen to death metal, you can. Yeah, and I can listen to an audio book or watch YouTube videos, which yeah. she's known to do sitting on the back of the bike. So, um, you know, it, in theory, everything was going to be great and wonderful, but in reality. It just didn't work as, as seamlessly as we wanted it to. Yeah. To the point it was just frustrating. And certainly the last thing you want, you know, you're excited, you're getting up, going to go for this ride, you plan this day out or whatever. You don't need that Zen to be disrupted and, 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 by yeah, components not logging on. Well, and, and I can understand, like, you know, for your work, you know, and, and whenever you wear them, having to take phone calls, most of the time, if, if I ever. You know, whenever I had mine in and took a phone call, most of the time they they got you know sent to voicemail because I you know that's that's my time that I have, and I'm a little bit old school. You know, like I've got the road glide and I just put the you know we put the sound stream 
uh, head unit in, sound stream out, um, infinity speakers. The music's great. I love the music. Um, but most of the time, uh, as good as all that sounds even, most of the time I'm just, uh, you know, I want to hear the motor and exhaust yeah. guy. Well, you guys eventually went to uh, half helmets and then it was all useless anyway. Huh. I mean, how long has it been since y'all put those things even on your head? Um, I mean, it, it's been a minute, kind of like you said. I, I still wear my full face helmet, uh, one, if I'm getting on the Beamer, two, uh, if I'm going uh, to be stuck on the interstate for a long period of time, yeah, I, I prefer the full face helmet. Yeah, I wore mine going out to Arizona. Um, I will say, you know, when we rode down to Daytona yeah. a couple years ago, uh, I can remember, you know, the morning we, we had stayed in the hotel room, got up the next morning, headed out to make the last leg or whatever. It was, Allison was getting ready for, um, for work, and, and I was able to FaceTime her you know, riding down the road with the comm unit, yep. you know, she could see me and I yeah. could see her. And that's, yeah. that's awesome. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, that was kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, is that worth a whole lot? Uh, you know, I don't know that it's worth the headache that I put into it yeah. at the time to make all well, that worth work. worth five or six hundred bucks to make it all tie together because you would have to buy yeah, harnesses I, I and, I've, and I've uh, bought whips SRLs, and I've bought, uh, you know, uh, dongle this and a yeah. dongle for that and a bypass for that and, and uh, countless hours trying to make yeah, it all work it, yeah. you know, then we bought the 30k's then i bought a 50 and and now i finally just said to heck with it i'm not connecting the comms to the bike yeah uh, the bike will have it standalone whatever it does yeah and then the comm units will be connected to our phones and if i want to use the comm you know if i want to listen to my music in my yeah. helmet then that's the what mine doesn't is. have a clue yeah. what's going on I, mine, yeah, mine's not connected to the bike at all i have and then, of course, you had the whole Harley thing where where CarPlay wouldn't work unless you had a headset connected to the bike. Mm -hmm. That's the way their head unit was set up. So through a lot of work, yeah, that's sure. yours. Through a lot of work and, and uh, due diligence and research and everything else, um, DJ actually found it, and then he got his laptop out, and we were actually able to patch into the uh, to the bike's computer bypass that setting basically tricked the bike into thinking it had a headset on it when it didn't mm -hmm. and then apple carplay would work so once we did that then we could buy the wireless dongles and plug into the cable that's in the right pockets or wherever those are located on your bike and and now we have apple carplay and everything works fine and our headsets are never even connected so before if we rode these helmets you know without comms and tried to get carplay on the on that we couldn't do it well, and, and the half helmets, you know, the, a bunch of the manufacturers, they make, you know, the half helmets that's got the earpiece that comes around, but I just... I know people that wear those and they seem to work good, but I just, it's hard for me to fathom that not getting... Hmm. Like my group that was from here and that mm -hmm. was out in Sturgis uh, that we never saw, but anyway, they were out there. He, wear, he wears a half helmet. It's got that ear uh, kind of covering. And, and yeah. you know, and, and it's inside it's built, it's there is the earpiece, the and then yeah. there's a mic that comes around kind of inside the strap, so it doesn't catch a lot of wind noise. But well, you know, if if your bike has stock exhaust on it, and or if you're not if you're riding with some, not right beside somebody that's you know got a terribly loud exhaust, or if you're not riding fast, I could see where you know any of the headsets would be great. Just about it, yeah. Um, but like for a loud bike or high speeds, you know, open fairings or whatever. I, I I'm not a fan. I, I pass. I think they are. Uh, I think they also could be a distraction. There's been a few times where um, I have been on the phone uh, talking and get kind of caught up in the conversation. Not not any chance of a wreck or anything like that. But get off the phone call and then like, where'd the last twenty the, miles go? Yeah, where yeah. did I, how did I get here? Maybe that's good. Maybe it's not. I don't know. But I don't ride anywhere near today like I did prior to my wreck. Um, so, you know, when I come to a stop sign, a red light, an intersection, um, in town, whatever, and there's other vehicles and things and people pulling out from gas stations and all that stuff, I ride completely different than I used to. I used to pull through and I was like, the light's green, I'm going. Eh, I don't trust it. I don't. The light's green, but I still watch and I'm watching yeah. for tires turning and I'm watching for motion. Um, everybody probably does it, but that's my thing that I, I do. Um, I stop sign, I come, I stop, and then I go. 
I, I look for eye contact. I, I want to yeah. make sure that they, they see, see and I me. see them and they're doing this and they're and they're doing this at yeah. the stop sign. And I'm like, oh no. Yep. That's when you give them yeah. the glove. Yeah, that's yeah. right. As so, soon as I make eye contact with that guy and that guy, it's like, yeah, that's hammer right. Hammer down, yeah, I'm get through this conversation. Right. That's right. Yeah, he that's knows right. I'm there. He that's knows right. I'm there. Mm-hmm. They know I'm there. Well, the worst place. I know I'm going to do that. Right. <laughs> well, and hey, they know I'm coming. I know I'm and coming. And that's where I'm sitting there going at the red light, you know. <laughs> I'm revving, I'm revving. I'm like, hello, you know. It's not just to showcase the new exhaust. No, it's, it's, no. It's, Loud it's is better. I, I've, uh, I watched the video not too long ago, and we won't go into this part, I don't guess, but watched the video where an insurance guy was actually did a little short clip on how loud exhaust is better. And he, and, and of course, hearing that, you're thinking like, oh, this ought to be interesting, you know, for all the guys that don't like loud exhaust. But he, his whole topic of it was discussing, pull up to a red light, rev that thing. You pull up to a stop sign, rev that thing. You pull up to an intersection or to a store or wherever there's traffic, cars moving around, he said, rev it up, rev it loud. Mm. He my said, do it. Let them know you are there. My neighbors, see you. my neighbors love it whenever I come home late at night. <laughs> And you know, you it, whenever you pull into the garage, and, you know, you pull flip around in there and you back it in or whatever, and you know, garage door is open, so it's you know, it's like an echo chamber. But That's you right. know, right before you shut it off, you got to give it that one little last, brat, brat, That's you right. know. <laughs> you, honey, this I'm home. Is, yeah, right. honey, right. I'm home, and the neighbors they know I'm home too. Well, you know, first thing when in we the morning, uh, when we came back from the uh, the saddle sore. Uh, it was what two two o'clock when we got back or to his this area y'all, yeah. y'all still had to go home but uh, our coming into uh, the house is kind of downhill from the stop sign you know and uh, I know how Sully is Sully's got to where that's our golden doodle um, and he's usually in the crate or upstairs whatever and he can hear it. he can hear the bikes coming and when he does but he pops straight up and he gets starts moving around and he's ready to come down and meet me and greet me and he howls with me and barks and it's just a fun hoot to see um but this was two o'clock in the morning everybody was sleeping uh this was we went on a monday night mm-hmm. or a monday morning. monday morning so this would have been tuesday morning monday yeah. night and uh so i was like oh crap so i come in around the stop sign got just on the hill and killed the switch and came all the way in left the you know the switch on just not the motor running and I got down here because on the uh, I've got the garage door open on the bike, so I hit the button, it raised up, and I just let it glide right on in here and never cranked it up because he had been spastic. He was like, "What? Oh, uh, he had what? Been, uh, yeah, exactly, exactly." So, but no, the whole loud the whole loud exhaust thing is, <clears throat> yeah, I don't, um, yeah. So, so how thing. loud? Speaking of exhaust, how loud is too loud? Is there a how about a Sawiki Speed Racing Pipe on a Pan American? That's pretty loud. That's that's that's. <laughs> That's pretty loud. Like I like. It sounds good. I like loud exhaust too, but, but there is a point to where it gets obnoxious. Yeah. And when you're riding, you know, you got you you have a bike that that you can ride like like Chris did, like I did, like like you have, and DJ. You know, we, we've rode you know 1,500 miles, and how the version of how loud is too loud is whenever you get home from your ride or wherever you're going and you can't hear for two days that's too loud when you're ringing well that's why they that's make ear, earplugs and i've got them there in both of my bikes i've got yep. shelly and my both and myself both have a uh, little ear, earplugs and there are times on our trip where we put them in if we're going to be on the bike for more than mm-hmm. you know a few hours uh and and really more than probably 40 50 miles an hour because yeah. uh, you're talking about turning 3,000 to 3,300 RPMs at 80 miles an hour. So, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably have something in. So I'm, It's I, just a comfort thing. Yeah. So I, I will say I've had thoughts of doing the custom-made earplugs. The, the molded. That have got filters in them and things. I actually went and sat with a an ear doctor. I don't know what it's called. Uh, ENT, ENT doctor. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> and, and he assured me that harley davidson exhaust was too low of a tone to do permanent damage oh really yeah. i wonder I if he's checked out the sawiki speed pipe <laughs> on a pan america <laughs> <laughs> what no, he, I can he said it, it's well, more likely that the wind noise would do yeah, the damage i've yes. heard that yes. yeah it's Sad. the high pitch more higher end than the yeah. lower end yeah. of, of the spectrum so, so so when we first started riding or i started back riding and I, I, I bought the the street glide 
and I put the uh, the Vance and Hines um, uh, high output song um, and uh, got off on the dealership because at the time I didn't know any better and that's what they had. They sounded good. They were good. They were really kind of a low uh, but definitely better than stock. Uh, that sounded like Trump just then. They were good. They were really good. They were good. It was good. It's You're going to be the best. Good. That's good. I'm going to be the best. I'm and they the didn't best. come from China. I killed him. I killed him. I took him out. I did the whole thing. I did it. Me. I did it. Um, anyway, um, so what well, I do have one orange. Uh, so uh, sold that bike, bought the next one. The next one had RC component exhaust. Which is another good pipe. That's what's on Phillips. Uh, it's a very good pipe. Um, I regret not keeping that pipe when I swapped it out. Um, I opted to not go to the extra work to get it back to the house we were staying at to load up for the girls to bring home. That, um, But they make good pipes. But anyway, you would always tell me, man, that thing's loud, that thing's loud, that thing's loud, you know. Uh, being behind it. Mm -hmm. It always sounded good to me, but it was also a twin cam. A little different. Different, than, sound, totally different yeah, sound than, than an M8. Um, but, um, but yeah, it was, it was loud. And of course, as I got more into it and started buying parts and bikes and different that, I realized all the diversities in it. And, um, I, you know, I, there are a lot of high pitched exhaust out there that I have come to realize that I don't like, um, you know, uh, but I, uh, currently I'm a big Chromeworks fan. There's live kind of on the more lower end, um, but I mean, the, depending on what you do with baffles, I mean, and the pipes, I mean, they're all going to be, you know, defined loud, all right. But they're all going to be kind of loud in this day and era. And the chrome work sounds stop. the chrome work sounds good. I've got the four and a half neighbor haters, you guys know, on my yeah. bike. Um, for me, it, as long as it doesn't sound like a, um, uh, but you can still take the baffles out. Yes, like like the chrome works. Yes, like, but like that, that. It, and that's what I was getting at. As long as any pipe doesn't sound like a uh, you know a three fifty Chevrolet with yeah. a straight pipe yeah. coming straight off the motor going mm -hmm. to the back and yeah. it has that that slappy loud like you took the uh, yeah. head pipes off the manifold. Right, as long as they don't sound like that, they're okay. But anything other than that, to me, just uh, it sounds know, awful. The, the the popular thing for. Late nineties, early two thousands with straight pipes. Mm -hmm. and oh, I, well. I've been on some rides with some guys with straight pipes. Mm -hmm. and man, it, I would have to do it. Well, and I don't I like. I mean, the, it, the guy riding it, you know, it sounds good to him. It's 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 just just loud to him. Yeah. The guy behind him is like, all right, I'm on. I'm gonna get about two miles back. I'll yeah, see you when I, we get I went there. On a ride. I mean, it's been a while ago now, but I, I, the guy had a, a blue soft tail. Straight drag pipes, and and I got behind him for a little while, like, like long shots. Yeah, yeah. And, and I just eased off and and let him get half a mile ahead yeah. of me. And yeah, but that's the way a lot of those bikes, like you said. I think back through the '90s, you know, you had the, the chopper phase that came through, and they were that was a big thing for them. Uh, now you've got the shorties, the turnouts. Um, you know, a lot of those are them guys will crank those up down in the rallies or somewhere we're at. My God, I just, I keep thinking that looks good, like like on your Fury and, and custom Southern Cycles. Oh, and all you're talking about like the street sweepers that well, the come one, out yeah, the, 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 I call them, no, I call them turnouts that come out right in front oh, of the yeah, bags. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and, and they just look cool because you can enclose the bags, you got no exhaust coming out back there, and it just looks cool, mm -hmm. but my God, it's loud. Well, you know, Dad's got a, he's got a 2008 uh, Harley Fat Bob, and he had screaming equal pops on it. He swapped them out. He wanted Ryan Hart's, um, but he put the Vance and Hines shorty pops on it. And they're, you know, they come to about mid frame. And you know, on his bike, it's a '96, and he's had motor work done, and it's it's loud. It's freaking loud. Yeah, sounds good, but it's loud. I'm not a big fan of any, like the Victory that I've got. It's um, it's got the long Victory drag pops on it, that are I guess what you'd call true dual. But because nobody else makes pipes for it, pretty much, yes, <laughs> pretty much these days. Yes, I don't think anybody is, else makes anything yeah, for it. That, <laughs> that is a correct statement. Um, but I, I prefer, prefer more the sound of any collect something with a collector or a cross, like an X pipe crossover or something to kind of. I'm, I'm not a true dual fan, and they make a lot of true dual setups for these newer M8 motors. But I'm I'm not a fan. Well, the truth of the matter is, and I know you probably know more than I do about this, so chime in. Feel free to correct me. But the truth is, is 
your M eight's best performance comes from a two into one. Yeah, it needs uh, back pressure. And Harley builds these bikes, and this is what I told you about buying a stock engine, even a 131 or 135. Harley builds everything to meet and exceed EPA regulations. So all of these bikes rolling off the showroom floor that come out of here sounding like Grandma's sewing machine when she used to have the foot pedal and go, that, that's, that's why. Yeah. It has nothing to do with being heard or seen in a red light. It has nothing to do with coolness. It has nothing to do with X Factor or whatever else. It has all to do with meeting everything that the federal government has pressured them, just like automobiles, to make their motorcycles be compliant in the EPA world. We spent the spring of 23 rally in Daytona talking to our good friend Kevin Carroll at Reinhardt and him saying point blank if you want a pre-compliant pipe you better get it now because he said when they're gone it's all going to be post-compliant that is all you'll be able to get so you know that header pipe that I was talking to you about that's mm -hmm. pre-compliant stuff so if you were to decide you wanted that it, it'd be good because you wouldn't have to worry about it. everything else what they've done is they've allowed, and this is Reinhardt specific because others may have done different, but they've allowed Reinhardt to keep the head pipes all the way out now and because they don't have catalytic converters in them. So now guess where the catalytic converter is or where the EP compliant device is? It's in the muffler. It's in the slip-on. So now if you go down there and you say, hey, man, I want to give me some headers and some big, bad, loud pipes and put on here. Cool, man. Well, your headers are really good. They're okay. Well, just give me some slip-ons. Well, guess what? You take your slip-ons off and you put slip-ons on and... And they got catalytic converters. And they got catalytic converters up in the slip-ons. Mm. So you got to give them a little bit of brain technology there. Somebody mm -hmm. was thinking, oh, these motorcycle guys, they like to do them little slip-ons. Like, we'll solve that problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so I know you run the Chrome Works on, which is probably what I'm going to be converting to... Um, probably here next month when we go to Daytona. Um, you know, they look good. They look great with the, with the angle of the bags that come down on the Harleys. Um, so do they have the uh, any kind of catalytic converter in those, in the slip-ons? So the odd thing is right now, and, and I really don't know what their compliant pipes are like, but no, they don't in the pipe, and here's why. They have been able to, again, chime in here. You may know more than me. They have been able to, because they make all the Harley stuff. All right, Chrome Works, everything you see on a brand new Harley sitting on a showroom floor, 90% of it, if not more, if not 100%. Relating to the exhaust. Relating to the exhaust came from Chrome Works, which is why you can buy aftermarket Chrome Works stuff and it match Harley's. So even like an OEM head uh, head pipe on say you know on a 107 or 114 is made oh, by it, Chrome Works. Well, comes the fact out of their manufacturing comes out of their manufacturing. Like four Harley. Harley. Same way with their yeah. handlebars. Uh, 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 if you go look at a stock bike, uh, and you know some pretty high percentage of them is, from my understanding, manufactured by KST. Yeah. Hmm. That's why I, yeah, I, I had a running that. joke for a while. Like, I wonder how many KST bars KST takes off of a stock bike mm -hmm. and Harley puts on the it good back ones. to their shop, hangs it, polishes it, and sells it to Harley yeah. again. Put, yeah. Puts a new barcode on it and sells <laughs> That's it. That's right. Yeah. So, so with that being said, I think they're probably able to get away with some stuff. Well, they are. Uh, your uh, your but, your big guys are the ones that are going to be hammered on by the by the EPA. Your Reinhardt, your Vance and Hines, Cobra. Uh, probably Cobra. So, D &D. so, so they're going to so, be hit, but D and D can fall under this umbrella of we're just, you know, we're just aftermarket support. We're racing only. We're well, track use only. Which is where we're, the uh, where the 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 sticker comes from, where it says for off road use only. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So technically, you're not supposed to run it, but ninety percent of the people. Would do run it. Right, so they've got this pretty small piece of market share that the EPA is willing to, you know, we're not concede going to or, them. or whatever, yeah. You know, that they've only got 1% of market share. Yeah. Let's look at Reinhardt that's got, you know, 60% of market share, and mm. those are the ones we're going to have to fix. Uh, and, and maybe that's proper or improper, I don't know, it doesn't matter. And Reinhardt has not put up a fight, right? Or Reinhardt could say the same thing, and 
you know, okay, well, we've got our race line that, you know, track keeps on. Right. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. but, you know, Reinhardt's decided to play nice and say, okay, we're going to yeah. do some R&D. We're going to come up with something that performs as well, but maintains a catalyst, <coughs> which I'm fine with. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't have a problem with the catalyst aside from the heat. Yeah, you don't hate the environment. Yeah. And that's what... That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, well, moving it to the slip-on uh, into the rear of the pipe or back was definitely a, a, it was a, a resolve of the, the heat rider. for the rider and the passenger. Part of the problem I find that I think they're going to down the road is going to is going to be is especially with these stretch bags is they're going to find that that's going to be a lot of heat on those bags and wonder how long that's going to last. Maybe, but you um, know the, the other side of this is it's just a Harley thing. Like, yeah, uh, and, and really the well, uh, you're, ca you're maybe even not even the Pan America is probably not affected by the by the catalyst much. You're probably not picking up on much of that heat. My BMW, the catalyst is under the bike. Yeah. Well, and if it's tuned right, the purpose of the oxygen sensor is to get the mixture right so you don't have the noxious fumes coming out the back and it's not harming the environment. And, you know, I think the only time that it, ever, it would ever come into play is if, you know, states that require emission control like California or New York or, you know, places like that where you actually, you know, before you can get a tag, if you've got a D&D &D pipe on there that's for track use only or off-road use only right. or whatever, and you go to get a tag and they're like, okay, well, they're doing their vehicle inspection and they, uh -huh. you know, check something and, and it registers. Um, I think until that point, you know, buy, you know, if you want to use one, yeah, absolutely. Buy one, put it on. I don't know that there is a um, uh, an imperfect scenario uh, if that comes across like I'm thinking it. Um, in other words, uh, you can go out there with any combination of you know my header pipes or, or uh, one is. Um, well, your exhaust is not legal, correct? No. Okay. Yeah, that's right. But you're gonna wear a helmet. Oh, absolutely. Okay. I was yeah. making sure. I was clear on that. Sorry. I'm going to wear a half one on this one and a whole one on that one. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, sorry. Did yeah. I you no, no, no. You go ahead. No, I, I, was, I was just... So, we've had this sorry. conversation and uh, I'll, I'll get you guys to chime in. For our listeners that may question our sanity in wearing a half helmet, I ch challenge you to ride a Harley with exhaust modifications with a full helmet and then take the full helmet off, put on the half helmet and see which is less uh, obnoxious. obnoxious. I want to go to first. You. I want to go first. Can I answer this? <laughs> I want to go first. Okay, so um, the trip that me and my buddy made last year. Um, we knew we were going to be riding pretty hard. We were riding solo. No wives involved on this trip. You know, we we got all the way over uh, really too far uh, in a safe manner on the sidewall tread of the tires. Um, really tossing around a big heavy bike. Well, we wore, we both wore our full face helmets. And, you know, I've got my HJC. He's got another brand. And again, love my helmet. Great helmet. Um, however... Whenever we left, you know, 60 miles outside of Washington, D.C., we got on the interstate, and we run them up pretty good. You know, we were running, uh, not dangerously fast, but we were running uh, 80, about 84 miles an hour side by side for right. about for about nine and a half, ten hours. Um, I had my neighbor hater exhaust on my bike. He's got RC components on his, and we're side by side, 34, 3,500 RPMs. And I can tell you from experience, and I know where you're going with this, it is much more loud for me wearing a full face helmet with aftermarket exhaust on a Harley than it is wearing an uh, open air beanie helmet. I, I it's, it's, like, it's like it's like an echo. Something it's like an echo chamber. Tone, yeah. that, that deep tone that yeah. gets inside of that helmet. It just, just rattles around. Rattles around. Well, it's 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 the drone. It's like uh, you know, several years I I, I drove a Z twenty eight. I I had a Flowmaster Super forty on it, and later got a Dodge with a Hemi and had Flowmasters on it, and it's a good deep tone, but you get to that certain RPM 
and there's a drone and you can't escape it it's there and now you got to speed up or slow down yeah you, you really you really can't and, and, and i think and, for and mine is two different things because that one over there the limited i had uh, the the i had the uh, baffles in going on the trip um and um really wasn't bad at all this one uh the road glide if if it's if i'm on a long trip with it i don't have any baffles in it um and and so there's a difference in rpm and how it affects the helmet mm -hmm. but yeah he and i had that conversation many times that's that is one of my biggest which is odd because when i'm on my comms back to comms mm -hmm. nobody else can hear it but it rattles in my ears like mm -hmm. if my ear was in the end of that pipe yeah i mean it's that it's not that it's that loud it's that obnoxious, and that's really the only word I know to use. Well, and you wouldn't more. think that a full-face helmet would be like that. You know, the one that I got and, and use and love, it's, you know, it, it's a good fit. It, you know, I've got an HJC head. I've tried on a bunch of different helmets, and for my whatever shape of my head, HJC <laughs> is the, the fit for me. Right. Um, <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> you said it, I didn't. But, but... Like, you know, even with the, as good as it fits and, you know, the, the padding and the molding and everything in it, you would think, okay, yeah, this is, this is excellent. You know, it, it's going to protect me in the event of a crash and, you know, block out any wind noise and all that. I've got the nose piece. I've got the, you know, the windshield that's on the bottom of it that's when you slip on and it's still out. It's, it's just, it, you, it, have, have you, have you tried any uh, modular? Well, helmets. Is there a difference between you know having that? That's why that break in the helmet. Or? I don't know. Um, I'm thinking about getting whenever I do uh, buy a helmet to ride with the KTM. I'm thinking very seriously about getting the ADV modular style helmet, um, just because you know if I get in a slow speed scenario where I need the protection, but I want the open air like woods riding, trail riding, whatever. Um, but I don't know. That's it's a, that's a to be announced scenario. Yeah, my my full face is uh, modular, and I'll tell you on those hot days going stoplight to stoplight, it's nice to have that little yeah that is, little convertible right there. The that, biggest thing I don't like about a the only downfall to a full face helmet is you know um, if you get hot and you know you want to get a drink of water or whatever or, you know grab a quick drink while you're going down the highway or stopping at a red light or whatever you can't get a bottle of water in there mm -hmm. you know and yeah even uh, even all these bendy straws that you get um you know because the way mine wraps around and it's so close you can't finagle something up in there to even get a sip of something to drink that's my only complaint well it's it's um it is a um There are inconveniences in about any, like I've looked at the, the, the 70s um, uh, helmets coming back. You know, oh, yeah, they're, the, the full, the three-quarter helmet. Three-quarter helmet with a modular yeah, shield. Yeah, and just, just the shield, the bubble shield yeah. um, is it, really making a comeback. Like, there was a lot of them in Sturgis that yeah. had them and more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know. But you I, can only I, wear those if you're riding a cafe racer. Possibly. Like you know, that's the correct look. That's right. That is the correct right. look. Right. 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 Um, I would suspect that you might get away from where you might get away with wearing something like that and, and it not rattle because of the style way it fits. I think that part of the problem with the full face and the noise is the sheer fact of how it comes around and out here, mm. you know, to that Possibly. nose yeah. area. And even though, and I've got the guard under mine as well. Um, and uh, the Sedici over here does not have it guard or did. I took it, it out. It makes a big difference. But it, it still seems to find its way up in there, and uh, it, it doesn't matter. But I'm wondering if one of those three-quarter kind of old style. Well, the, 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 the regular three-quarter helmets and, you know, like none of us are old. Well, except Randy. He's kind of <laughs> old. But they look like, you look, they look like a pawpaw that's, on a gold wing. That's what they look like. You, you see a lot of people that ride gold wings, not knocking gold wings, but they it's it's a pop off helmet. Um, the cafe racer style helmets, yeah, they're actually pretty cool, but I don't think I could wear one though because it makes me, I'd feel like a goldfish. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you put that head in a helmet, mm. it's probably going to look like about ready to pop. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
Well, it's a safety hazard. I mean, you got the wind that's coming over the, you know, the yeah. left hand shield, and you got, you know, beard hair that's doubling back up, you know, of just causing all kinds of chaos. You know, I, and I got to tell you, that is just one. I'm about to cut mine. I think I'm gonna cut mine off. So now that you've got an ADV bike and that sip of water you were talking about, are you gonna do the Camelback? <sighs> well, I, I think. Is that well, camel I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I no, I, I don't think that I will. Um, because I, I don't foresee as much as I love to ride, I don't foresee myself ever being in a situation where I'm gonna be so far from a store that I can't stop and get me something to drink or not have, you know, a bottle of water and a tank bag or tail bag or something. So when you and I are going past him on a trail and I go and you do the same thing, he's gonna be like <laughs> <laughs> so, so no to answer that question no i'm i mean they're they're neat they're uh i i think it's um i've looked at some that it comes with mm -hmm. like it comes in in a vest because you can buy like uh moscow sells the, the the i guess the harness that you can put different bags on a backpack and then a front pouch and different things and they come in some of that stuff huh. um viking bags and some of the other people do too um, if it came in it like I don't know that I would buy one. Do you have one yet? Mm -hmm. I well, I want to be if I'm right to buy about one. I've, I've been told that I will appreciate having one. Well, okay, well, it's one big difference in not and like one on that versus I mean what's what's the reasoning for having it that you uh if you had no, no. storage on your bike, you you're riding a Beamer and, well, and you've got the you got the six ninety and you're probably gonna put a tail bag. I mean you're always gonna have a bottle of water. I mean think about every time that you had to go ride, you've got, you know, two liters of water strapped to your back and it's gonna be it, it's gonna be hot. I mean we're in Alabama or whatever. It's gonna be hot. It's I mean, you're gonna drink it. Cold. You're gonna have to refill it. It's just to me it's kind of a gimmick. I mean I can if I was know. in a desert, if I was in Arizona, the Mojave Desert, or somewhere, you know, Nevada, where I was going to be riding in 110 degree weather, no chance of a gas station. And now, and I will say, we've been on some rides. We've been on some rides. You coming out there where gas stations are few and far between. Mm. Few and far between. So I could see where uh, there would be a need for it. Uh, the problem that I have with having something for when there's a need is like most everything else we buy for these bikes it's expensive but then so you go through i think we're a little spoiled on the harleys and that we stop you know we're wearing a half helmet mm -hmm. we're wearing fingerless gloves the bottle of water is in the cup holder yeah agreed I, I see where you're going with that. And in an adventure bike, you know, now you're stopping in the middle of a trail. There's less storage or no storage. There's there's less storage. There's not a cup holder because mm -hmm. you couldn't maintain it. There. You got a full face helmet you on. You got a full face helmet on that probably doesn't have a quick release. It's probably them pissing D rings. Yeah. You got full gloves on. Yeah. And a chest so piece where you look like you're going to go this on the bomb. Water. That's right. <laughs> It's like, all right, I got I to gotta undo all this garbage. I got to get this helmet off. I yep. got to dismount this bike. It's sitting on, you know, maybe, uh, you know, it's gravel, it's dirt. It's it's just not a parking lot. So you lot finally say, screw it, I'll just dehydrate and die. <laughs> so I think that there's, there's one side of it that the guys are like, you know, if you've got the camel back, it's just a quick, it's in, yes. you get a drink, you go back. I mean, the practicality of it, I ain't going to lie. The pro I see that on the guys that are riding on these videos all the time, and the practicality of it, you look at it and go, why didn't I think of that? I mean, it's, well, it makes I'm, sense. And I Look, I'm, I ain't going to lie. I, I thought a couple times in the summer riding these bikes how I could run one of those um, silicone hoses into the saddlebag yeah. or something like that <laughs> yeah. and run a hose up from the saddlebag and, you know, put... <laughs> You know, or something. I don't know, but well, I'm, uh, I'm just I'm lazy. As long as they, you know, as long, got, as, long as we, again. I'm lazy. As long as we have water <laughs> that comes in plastic bottles of any shape, form, or size, I'm gonna pack my water. As long as he just pass like through this. a town of Aladdin with 15 people, he's gonna stop. No, it, no. As long as I can, as long as I can have my water in a bottle, and I can strap that puppy somewhere, anywhere. I don't care if it's with duct tape, electrical tape, or with bungee strap. That's how. 
on the bike. That's how I'm going to carry my water. Okay, so I, don't, I, I, have, I have my I have my argument again to ask. What is the difference? Ignore the cost. What is the difference from having a two liter vest thingy and a two liter bottle on the bike? What's well, the difference? Convenience is a big factor there. I don't what want else? I don't want to be wearing the water. Like I don't want to wear the water. I don't want to put the water on with my so jacket. So we're in tank bag. Yeah. I mean, I've got a bladder. I've got a built-in bladder. It works just fine. I don't need to wear a bladder on the it. outside you of can my suck bladder. It. That's true. How about that? I'm surprised it took well, this long. <laughs> I've got a. I've got, <laughs> oh. I think we lost him. <laughs> We might, we might have to cut the video here. No, I mean, I, I'm, for me, it's just like I don't want to wear my water in a bag. Like, I, it's, um, I just, I don't want it sloshing around on me, thing. and it, it's just, it's just not for me. I, I, I it's it don't slosh around on you. It's in a compact bag inside of, a, on the back side yeah. of your bomb disabling <laughs> yeah. torso device. You well, I, I can, like I said, I can see the practicality of it without even but thinking I, hard. I think some of it comes from the racing world. You know, when you guys. Guys doing rally races. Yeah, well, in Talladega, like Talladega races, where they, you know, you you have to be in that seat. You can't get over. You can't, you know, you can't stop. You have to keep going. Have a NASCAR driver. They have it in there. Where how do they, yeah. they have a tube also that comes? Yeah, from it's the, just it's the same way, yeah. you know, because they can't stop, you know. Yeah. But you but know, they pee in their bags too somehow. I mean, they got yeah, they pee through the straw. <laughs> I, and for me, <laughs> I'm never going to be in a situation where I would use it. I mean, I will pull over. I will find somewhere. Get a drink to get a drink. I, I'm really, I've seen them, and and a couple of the bags that I was looking at, they it said you know comes with a whatever bladder you know or you know, and I'm thinking if sure. it comes with it, I get it. But did I ever go online and look and go, I need a water? I, I don't know. I would come closer to if I was going on a sure enough serious trail ride. Um, I would come closer to buying a little bottle of the water or one of those straws it's a water filtration straw and find the water in a creek that's going to purify it or you know scoop it up in a cup and drop a pill in it and let it pure versus wearing a external hydration camelback you see that video where the guy says that you know everything you just said is the dumbest, <laughs> stupidest thing, and we are now all dumb. I'm not getting there. A yeah. stupid camel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I will do. Right, what I will do. But I will carry the little water yeah. filtration pills. Yeah. But I will tree hug, tree hug my filtration. Why do I want to carry two liters of water on my back? I will spot I can, the I can birds. Drink, which I can be drink close whole, to the creek. I can drink a whole creek bed full of water with this straw. And I tell you what, be back with you guys. I gotta boil my water. And when, and when I'm <laughs> and when I'm riding in the middle of the summer and it hadn't rained in two months and there's no water in that creek bed, you'll yeah. be finding that grub that's got some juice in it. I don't know. Just for me, I don't think it's a good fit. I, I would never I, use one. I don't know how I would feel about you know, it riding or not. I've never had one, so I don't. You know, uh, I can tell you this. I have been in um, eight-hour tournaments bass fishing in the heat of the summer, other times, you know, hot, and, you know, have a cooler full of bottles, you know, water, whatever, power aids, and have to lay my rod down mm -hmm. uh, and then go get something and keep hydrated mm -hmm. or do it while I'm moving from spot to spot. Um Yes, I could think several times how it would be nice just mm -hmm. to be able to, you know, but, and, <laughs> I'll tell you, you know, that, and drink while I'm, you know, I can keep fishing. Uh, you know, so. Lisa and I, the wife and I, we have uh, camelbacks and, and we use them for hiking. I didn't yeah. know he had a camelback. Whatever I said, you're derogatory <laughs> about them, I take it all back. Uh, <laughs> so there's a place in Arizona <laughs> called Camelback. Oh, nice. Uh, so we we use them for we we do a lot of well we used to we haven't done as much anymore because now we spend our time riding instead of hiking. But we um, you know we'll go bankhead or, or someplace yeah. like that and we'll, we'll go for a whole day pack a lunch and instead of carrying in eight bottles of of water a piece to get us through the whole day we got a three and a half liter 
you know, a yeah. bladder that fits in the backpack and you got a, you know, extra shirt and extra pair of socks and stuff like that. So that's convenient. And Again, the, and I can see the practicality of it. I just, you know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I might would like it not. I'd have to. And try for the that. hiking world, that I, yeah, I mean, I guess that would be okay. Or for take the, the straw with you. Yeah, for the fishing world, this is where I'm at on that. So, and this is just my opinion. So, like, I motorcycle for fun, and whenever it becomes too much like work, then I'm out. You know, so anything that's going to require me to do this or require me to do that or you know becomes a burden that i have to do like wear a camelback or replace are one you trying to say the word work yeah well <laughs> i do it for fun so if it causes me stress and wearing that would stress me out then yeah. it's not fun anymore so i'm gonna pass on it go ahead dj <laughs> <laughs> not sure i appreciate his tone <laughs> Well, he knows it's coming. He's like, just go ahead and give it to me. What about Friday night? Let me paint the picture. Oh, oh, I know where you're going with it. Friday night. Man, it's 10 o'clock. You've had dinner. You've had a couple sippies. The new battle pass is out. Oh, man. You enter into a tournament. Now it's two o'clock in the morning. But don't use drinks. Y'all use, use piss. Y'all go pee. <laughs> y'all conquer the level seven of dungeon world. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're gonna say, and 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 yes. Would you use the Camelback then I so that you could would. maintain play? I absolutely would. There, I have actually. <laughs> he would had work the, at that. I have. I, I have. <laughs> I have absolutely had to pee so bad that I actually leaked on my underwear before because I didn't want to get killed by putting by hiding somewhere in a, in a dark corner on Those of you that can't see here where he's 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 like, 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 like if I had a if I had a kill bike to pee in right now, I would pee in it. I, I wish I had a catheter because I gotta go. Hey, you drink water out of a camel bag, you don't pee in it. Uh, you know that, right? <laughs> well, I mean, technically, I mean, you could do pee either, in it and then use the filtration uh, straw on right. the creek. You can use back. anything as a container. I, if it yeah. camelback, ice bucket, whatever, ice bucket. anything that'll hold whatever mm. you can use. That's yeah. right. Yeah. How uh, do we get off on this? Wow. Uh, this has been a, This is no. I think this has been a very good well, uh, look, gear, uh, gear video. This, this is this is the thing, and, and this is really. I'm glad that was a good kind of exit to the exit. Um, but that's this is what we want this thing to be about. We want to be about fun, uh, making memories, talking about memories, and just you know hashing over everyday real life experiences and uh, potentials. Um, you know we've done a lot of things. I mean uh, you know we're all in our you know y'all are in your forties and I'm in my fifties and we've been around and seen a lot of things. But we've got a lot more stuff to experience and life to live and uh, and we're looking forward to it. So. Thanks, guys, for coming tonight. Yeah. Uh, been a pleasure. It's, been, it's been awesome, and uh, we will um, look forward to the next episode. I want to try to see if the next episode we can get John uh, on for, for one, or maybe sit in for the whole, uh, the whole session. We'll see how that goes, and, uh, and we'll talk to him about that. But, um, mm -hmm. hey, until next time, uh, next time God bless uh, Southern Tulane now. No, let me hang it. There we go. There we go.